Sorry, I'm paying attention to the Simpsons dialogue in the background. Hey everyone, it's Alexander the Real Mr. Robinson. Welcome to the channel and it's another vlog. A surprise one and I'm here at Universal Studios Hollywood. Uh, I'm actually here for a uh, quick period of time. I'm not planning to do a full day because right now it's almost 7 o'clock. I actually got into the park uh, a little later than I thought, uh, but I mainly wanted to do a couple things. Uh, the special effects show because over the summer they recently brought it back, but uh, it'll soon be going away and only, according to the app, it's playing only on the weekends and will not be going throughout the entire week like it has been all summer and I just never had the chance to check it out. I'm actually recording this right after getting out of it and I mostly just watched the show but I did record the opening and the closing of it. So hey, here's that footage. Wow, it's been a hot minute since I was in this theater last and by hot minute I mean well over two and a half years. I can't remember the last time I was in this theater. right here. They were widely used by traveling showmen projecting images onto white backdrops. Now just for a moment, imagine what that must have felt like. You're sitting in a darkened tent when suddenly a white backdrop is revealed. A single image appears and that image when viewed in the right light and in the right order and at the right speed comes to life. It creates a magical new world. Ready and action. Light. You lift. long time since I've seen the special effects show and it's mostly the same from what I remember but still very charming and it's a really fun show. Uh, if you get a chance to see it when it's still running, definitely check it out. Uh, so now I only have two other things to do. I'm going to go hop on the studio tour to check out Jupiter's Claim from Nope and also the nighttime lights at Hogwarts Castle because as I'm recording this, this is the last weekend it's uh, playing. I know on my channel I have a video of it from its first debut back in 2017, but uh, I wanted to just see this version of it for myself. So we're going to do that near the end of the day, but first let's hop on to the studio tour. It's currently 6.59 and the studio tour closes at 7.15. As long as we walk past this archway, I am good. 
and I'm good. There's San Fernando Valley and Warner Brothers off in the distance. They're clearly going through some difficult times. But is there really any theme park in the world where you get as good a view as this? I probably doubt it, or at least among Universal and Disney parks. I think this is the best view you can possibly get. During the tour, please keep your arms and all items inside the tram. If you need any kind of guest assistance, for instance, a medical emergency, or you drop something of value off the side of the tram, do not jump off of the tram. This is unsafe for you and those working at the studio. My name's Rob, your tour guide. Amanda's going to be our driver, and as I mentioned, we're traveling through that 400 acre lot. We have the world's largest and busiest movie studio. They are doing some filming down there, so there's a quiet zone. I'm going to have to come off the microphone after Jaws, right when that ends. I'm sorry. The determination to lose this place. We get an opportunity to see a few of them as we go by and tell you a little bit about the sound stations and things that they built inside there. You'll also notice quite a bit of construction happening over here on the studio side. They're building new production offices, screening rooms, sound stages. Over here on our left, that's one of our oldest and largest sound stages for several seasons. That was The Voice. Before that, it was used for a Taylor Swift music video called Me, and they created the mansion in there for Scarface. That's where Al Pacino introduced you to his little friend. That was all filmed inside that sound stage. And over on our right-hand side, we're also expanding on the theme park side. I think a lot of you are familiar with this. We're excited to announce that Super Nintendo World will be opening in early 2023 here at Universal Studios Hollywood. You can find updates about Super Nintendo World on our website and social media accounts. Directly in front of us as we pull forward, you'll notice what we call our brownstone streets. And you'll see also closed set badges required. That's because Ted is going to start filming in this area too. They can prep those streets. They'll use these probably next week. But look at these brownstones. Look at some of the big name stars who walk those sidewalk here. Elvis, the King, Robert Redford, Arnold. All right there in your left hand side. Hey everyone, welcome to New York. I got my start right here in New York on Saturday Night Live. This is actually my old neighborhood. I once got mugged over there. An old woman. Tough lady. So I was thrilled when Universal invited me back to Skull Island, and it's great to have you along the line. Side, we're going to drive through Universal Studios picture car section. These cars became almost as famous, almost as famous as the stars who drove them. Let's not go back to the future for Biff's car, the 1946 Ford right there, convertible. And then on your left hand side, Fred Barney Wilma had these out for a spin. No engines in there, they had to use their feet. They were also the brakes as well, too. It looks like something's happening in the mobile command center on your left. Is that a dinosaur? Oh, there's a couple dinosaurs in there. He's in trouble. Uh, another one, too. Nothing we can do with that. So listen, everyone, be careful as we go by. Those dinosaurs could be anywhere. I need everyone to please remain seated. Thank you. Look out. Look out. Cars three and four. You wonder what we're scripting about, you're about to find out. Oh no, why is that not going off? Last time this happened, I almost got fired. Oh no, it happened again, it's a flash. Well, look out, Amanda. If you're in a blue seat, everyone, you may get wet. Car one, you're not safe either, I thought you wouldn't. You know the routine. Oh. If you're familiar with the TV show, The Good Place, and you're familiar with the afterlife. And if you're not, don't worry about it, because as we turn the corner, you're going to enter the afterlife. And I'll play a couple of scenes from in here, and you can get an idea of what these sets look like in the TV show starring Ted Danson and Kristen Bell. You, Eleanor Shellstrom, are dead. Cool. What's everybody pointing at? Oh my gosh, there's a second shark. This is not good. 
Oh no, that's not good at all. Yeah, uh, uh, George, there's a second shark. You gotta get back. Jo oh, uh oh. George, he's one of my closest chums. <laughs> there goes the barrel and the pier. And what are those cans of gasoline? This was a bad idea, Amanda. I'm sorry. Real bad idea. Oh. Anybody see that shark? Get that camera ready. Maybe he's here. Whoa. Over here. Universal has been fortunate to work with generation-defining directors like Alfred Hitchcock and Steven Spielberg, and now we're thrilled to partner with Academy Award winner Jordan Peele. In just a moment, we'll be taking you to Jupiter's Plane, the actual set from his new sci-fi thriller. No, to tell you more about the set, here's Mr. Jordan Peele. Movie magic only happens when a team of collaborators, often in the hundreds, work together to take an impossible mission and bring it to life. This is Jupiter's Planet, a nostalgic, small-time, Southern California amusement park owned by former child star Ricky Juke Park. Over there, look into the winking well and have your picture taken just like the kids in that old 90s movie, Big Chair. That's what this whole place is loosely based on. Remember that one? <laughs> A little further down, you can see the brand new Star Lasso experience. Built to showcase an unbelievable new live show. Oh, it's not looking so live anymore. Anyway, behind this Hollywood fantasy of the Gold Rush Frontier Town lies the Simpsons. It is smack dab in the center. Welcome to the world of no. glasses you have put them in the blue bits that you see in front of you that would help us out greatly thank you very much it's always great to go on the studio tour any attraction when day is transitioning into night and I've been on the tour when Jupiter's claim opened I just didn't bring the camera with me but seeing the set at night is certainly Oh, much more creepy than seeing it in the day. In fact, if I remember correctly, I don't think there's even a scene in the movie that takes place at night in Jupiter's Claim, so that was cool to see. If this were earlier in the day, you'd be able to get a better view of the Super Nintendo World construction. I mean, with this camera, yeah, you can get, get a glimpse of it, and it's coming along nicely as minions screen the Universal theme in the background. Amongst a very pretty sunset. didn't plan on going to the lower lot. My itinerary for this trip was do the special effects show, do uh, the studio tour to see Jupiter's Claim, 
and then see the nighttime lights at Hogwarts Castle. That was it. But Jurassic World The Ride is only at a 30 minute wait as I'm recording this. So I'm gonna try to hop on it. Uh, it's at night. I'm really curious to see how uh, it looks through this camera at nighttime because I have another video on this channel of Jurassic World The Ride at night, but that was before it got refurbished with the new Indominus Rex. And that was with an older camera. So if I can get in the fifth row and film the ride without getting this camera wet, then uh, I'll be curious to see what it looks like. I think it'll look fantastic because the low lighting on this thing is just incredible. But I'm not going to waste any more time. I'm going to hop on Jurassic World the ride as soon as another boat comes down. I'm just speaking to fill up the space because another boat has to show up at any moment. It's been a while since the last boat has shown up. And uh, did I tell you all how much I dislike Jurassic World Dominion? They even played a trailer for it in front of the special effects show, which, I mean, it was weird, but it was worth it to see that poor bastard on the scooter get eaten again. And I am, once again, just killing time. Ah, there it is. Now let's get on the ride. As I was walking up to the gate, it just changed from 30 minutes to 20 minutes. That's even better. So the single rider line is open, but this is not a 20 minute wait. I'm just gonna go on the regular line and just go through all these chains. That is a tiny, tiny Indominus Rex if I've ever seen one. that as a separate video because the uh, Mosasaurus tank actually took place during the day even though it's you know night so uh, I will try again some other time if I wasn't in a time rush right now I would hop back on the ride and see if the nighttime version of the Mosasaurus tank exists but I'm gonna rush got to see nighttime lights at Hogwarts Castle and then I gotta head back home oh boy it is already crowded but uh, this is a fantastic view either way I just I just have to get out of the way
done, and I think that pretty much concludes my day here at Universal Studios Hollywood. Uh, lots of people cheering for Slytherin and Gryffindor. Not enough people cheer for Ravenclaw, which I honestly take, pardon the pun, umbrage with that. Can't even believe I used that in this land. Really briefly, just want to walk through the Universal Plaza right here and see this giant minion ball right here. I know it's supposed to be adorable, but honestly, it's more creepy than it is charming. And then right over here next to the palace, we have a entrance for a new Horror Nights house. I don't know what it will be for, so I will wait till Universal makes an official announcement. But uh, the fact that you could see this facade as clearly as you can right now is pretty cool. And really briefly, we have this corner of the studio store that is decked out the Super Nintendo World. Now, they were selling Super Nintendo World merch last year, but it wasn't decorated like this. There were no pipes, there were no blocks, and there was certainly no Mario music playing in the background. Ba, ba. Hey, so here's another outro that I forgot to film at the park, so I'm doing it from my home. So summer is winding down, and uh, with that, I'll be able to have more time to go to Universal, do more theme park related vlogs, and my magic key at Disneyland will be back up and working again, so keep your eyes out for more of those videos in the future. I also realized that I haven't uploaded a lot of the ride-through videos that I filmed at Disneyland. I'm gonna start doing that next weekend. I wanted to get this vlog up earlier, but this weekend was the Hollywood Critics Association TV Awards and I was unbelievably occupied with that. So that's why you're getting it the day after the nighttime lights at Hogwarts Castle are done for the summer. Thank you for watching this video. Keep your eyes open for more theme park related videos in the future, especially now that Halloween Horror Nights is coming around. Once we get closer to Horror Nights, I'm gonna be posting my vlog from the previous channel of last year's Halloween Horror Nights, uh, as well as the Terror Tram, in addition to making a vlog for this year's event. So keep your eyes open for those. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell button to get notifications. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Go check out my Twitch channel and support me on Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, have a good day and take care of yourselves.